Hi, everybody. Um, I am in Gallatin, Tennessee. I am here with Fred Bailey. Um, I, I have to tell you, I'm overwhelmed at meeting him. He is a phenomenal man. He's done great things. Um, he'll tell you he hasn't, but he has. Um, I'm going to ask him a few questions. This is probably going to be my longest interview just because after speaking with him for the past 30 minutes, there's a lot to tell. First, um, Fred, tell them a little bit about your background as a child, please. Well, I'm the 10th of 15 children, and uh, my father was an alcoholic, and um, we were sharecroppers on a farm not too far from here. And uh, the, the main things that I remember about growing up in that in that environment was working. As soon as you were able to walk, you had chores to do, and those chores had to be done without question because my father was a strict disciplinarian. We were extremely poor. We didn't have good clothes. We very seldom went to school because we lived so far away from even where you would go to catch the bus. And we were glad to miss it because our clothes weren't good and, and we got laughed at and picked on and so forth and so on. But we never thought about we, I guess it would be called bullying today, but we never saw it as that. We just basically grinned and bared things. But because my father was just not going to allow you to get in a fight at school or to get in any trouble at school, and he just didn't allow that stuff. He was just strict. But when they found out I was blind, I, I ran into a teacher of mine and and, and man, they took me to a doctor down in Nashville. Third grade. It was but, third grade before they discovered he was blind. But right? third, third grade, and because uh, I was always good at trailing my brothers and sisters and and listening to their footsteps and following them, and I did it quite well. So you, it was never readily noticeable that I was blind because you can't look at me and tell I have retinitis pigmentosa, which is a degenerative retina problem. But when they sent me to the school for the blind where education was the focus. Well little did I know that was the other piece in, in that I needed to change my position. I had the first piece and didn't know it and that was work ethic. I wasn't lazy. I didn't mind work and we worked hard. So when we uh, coupled that with an education then my, my poverty, my blindness, my blackness all was made null and void. That's when I was off and running at that point. And that's basically my, my early childhood. And then uh, I, went, I went to work at GE. And I, I don't know, 85, 90, somewhere like that. And that's when um, I decided that uh, I, I needed to start this organization because I heard some people talking about why poor people didn't do any better than they did after all of the money that had been spent on the social problem, the Great Society program, the War on Poverty programs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you cannot spend money on problems that the individual needs to uh, take control of. Um, you just don't spend money on those type of problems. You just can't, you just cannot spend your way out of those type of things. And so I said I was going to start this organization to take young, so-called disadvantaged people and show them what you need to do, how you need to act in, in, in order to make it in a democratic capitalistic system like we have in America. And this is when we started Children Our People back in 2000, 2001, so that these kids could get the message that the government should not be responsible for their livelihood, for their socioeconomic advancements, so forth. If, if you don't do that through your own initiative, your own will, then you are destroying the inner person. And this is what you see today. This is why you have so much lawlessness. This is why you have so many people that, that don't seem to care about an education. The inner person has been destroyed through government intervention, and that's why I'm so against that. Fred feels so strongly about teaching children to give them the tools to make it to survive through education through themselves to find what you're good at and work really hard at it and you'll make it one way or another you'll make it yeah the the ultimate goal I and mean, in, in, in I don't care what we're teaching if we teach in science if we teach in math wrestling basketball football it makes no difference what you're teaching the ultimate goal is to get you ready for life 
And as I was saying, life has its own set of rules, and it's in and they're very very strict. And but it's well ordered. Um, life is ordered in a way that I can't adjust for you. I can't adjust and adapt for you. You must do it yourself. The government can't do it for you. But life mandates that you adapt and adjust to it or it will destroy you. And this is why you see a lot of individuals uh, in cages, so-called prisons and jails. They are not willing to adapt and adjust. They think they can go out here and sell drugs, steal, and this type of thing. And that's not the way you adapt. It, Life, it, life is so ordered. You've got to adapt and adjust in the proper way life wants you to, and that, and that's this is what we're trying to teach here. It's very important. We don't have a lot of time, unfortunately. So this is this organization or is called Children or People. Mm -hmm. um, it holds sixty six kids um, as of now. Mm -hmm. Fred would like to grow it. Fred has everybody that here is a volunteer. Um, he does not rely on state or government funding. This is a nonprofit. Donations through individuals, churches, um, public grants, and things public like grants. Mm -hmm. um, our goal with Share the Word is to share Fred's story, Fred's vision, to hopefully get um, some donations. You can go to their website, which is www.childrenorpeopletennessee.org. Is that right? TN.org. Mm -hmm. TN.org. Um, but the reason that we don't take any state or federal money, I don't, I don't think the problem in Sumner County, Gallatin, in this area, I don't think it's a government problem. I think we know more about what these kids need than Washington or the State Assembly ever would. I think this is what we've done. We, we, we've given over our, 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 our states, our cities, our counties, we've given them over to the government. and. Washington cannot do what you and I do here. Washington can. Washington is too far away. It's too inanimate of, a, of an object to do what we need to do here. It's just. It's. It's just too unwieldy, and so it just. It will not ever. It will never ever bring to bear what what society needs. And we need to get away from it. We need to go back to where it was in the fifties and sixties to where we did not know government as an entity to rescue you for whatever reason, medical, housing, or whatever. Y'all, he's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good meeting you today. Well, you too. Thanks, everybody, and please, please go to their website and donate. Thank and um, you have anything thank else you so very say? Uh, Thank you so very much for letting us talk to you, and um, I'm hoping that you will go to the website, Children Are People, TN.org, and look at what we do, and and if you find that you want to help us out, you, you'll, you'll see how to do it on the website, but you'll find that we are different from any other after school program that you will ever come in contact with because I'm not interested in a lot of the other things. I'm not trying to uh, social engineer anything. I just want to get back to a society which I thought was good, and that's when working age people went to work and wasn't walking up and down the street at 10, 11 o'clock in the day, didn't know anything about drugs, never heard of it. You know, we knew about alcohol, but even the, even the alcoholics at my time were real men. I don't see many real men today, and that, that's what we, we, we got to start training men to be men and train women, train women how to be ladies, and most of all, train these young people not to start making families until they can afford them and, and also understanding when they give the Pledge of Allegiance what they're really promising. And if they can't live up to it, stop pledging it. Thanks. Thanks everybody and I will see you on my next video. Thank you. That was a, that was a